My name is Lisa Pellrine, Director of Enrollment Management here at Chapel Hill Chauncey Hall School. Um, welcome again to our live webinar on our visual and performing arts. Just a reminder that these webinars are recorded and are available on our website under the admissions page under our virtual uh, revisit day events. And so in case if you've missed any of the prior ones, please feel free to watch it on that page. There's a link to all of them. Um, so far we've done academics at CHCH. We had a, a fantastic student panel followed by our skills and academic support program. And then last Friday we finished the week off with the parent panel. Um, so this week we, we um, have today's and then tomorrow we're wrapping up, or I'm sorry, tomorrow we have director our director of college counseling to talk to you about the college counseling process. And then we're gonna wrap it up with our athletics at CHCH program um, on Wednesday. So again, thank you to everyone who's been joining us. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day. I'm just gonna share my screen with you um, so we can talk about what to expect over the next hour or so. Um, so after my opening, we're going to be watching a video of our, of our, um, our visual and performing arts building. This was made when we actually opened the building um, last month in February. Um, so again, we're sad that you all aren't able to see it um, right now. It's a fantastic new space we're super excited about. Um, but again, just as soon as we're able to get back on campus, um, you know, we're excited to welcome all of our, our new families um, on campus at some point to, to see that. Um, but hopefully this video will give you an inside look um, of some of that space as well. And then we're gonna have the panelists introduce themselves and then we're gonna open it up to a Q&A. So if you want to, in the meantime, start thinking about some questions, that you're interested in asking. Um, we have a couple students joining us today as well as um, three of the uh, faculty members within the arts department. Okay, so we have an exciting hour or so to, to accomplish. So I'm gonna turn it over to Matt to get our video up. This video is a little bit longer than past videos we've watched on these live webinars. It's about five minutes long and then we'll get into the Q&A. Thanks again, everyone for joining us. Chapel Hill is a very special place. Its program, its curriculum, I think provides uh, an excellent education for kids uh, in a way that's supportive. At Chapel Hill Chauncey Hall, the arts are an important part of the program. When I stepped foot on campus 14 years ago, I was blown away by this building, but we had all school assemblies and senior presentations in a building that really needed a facelift. Well, the barn is sort of a very important symbol for Students who've been here, when alumni think about Chapel Hill, they think about the barn. We've completed this five and a half million dollar facility, the greatest investment that the school has ever made into teaching and learning at Chapel Hill Chauncey Hall. What those alumni saw in the barn will continue to future generations of Chapel Hill students. I'm thrilled today to have the opportunity to open the doors to a group of students that are coming through for the first time to see to feel the spaces that we've worked so hard on. Students, this is that moment. You know, we have been waiting a long time and we wanted the students to be the very first ones to walk in and experience it. So without further ado, why don't we head on in? So the pedestals and the half walls and the benches. Here we had a place that is ours. And now we have this amazing soundproofed room so we can make as much music as loudly as we want. Do you feel the practice Music rooms? practice rooms, yeah. We're so excited to have practice rooms so that we can refine what we're doing in a way that doesn't disturb others or is intrusive to anyone else. Looking forward to the opportunity to start building something, not only programmatically, but also to have the space to do that. Everything is new, smells fresh. Building circuits and you know wiring up, you know robotics, you know drones and things like that, just to start exploring those things. We have all these defined spaces, but what I like is there's like lots of flexibility and like there's options. In the end, everything is better than I thought. I can't wait to take ceramics. No, no. There's no way. We're in a hotel. <laughs> we are.
already have a really, really talented group of students. Um, and, and this new space is going to allow us to showcase that talent even more. We have a box office, right? <laughs> How cool is that? Uh, we have risers. Um, we have lots of other rehearsal spaces in this space. I can't even begin to list the things they're going to be excited about because it's everything. This is what we've been waiting for. The space they have in their green room and um, areas for changing and costumes and a backstage space that they can actually walk through and brand new seats and a brand new light and sound booth and lights that uh, change color without needing a gel in them. Just all of this brand new technology that's so, so cool to have and makes such a different impact for shows. They've been talking about it and I'm like, I want to go in and finally I'm in here and it's incredible. This is our actual theater. This is where we belong. We set out on a project to create a new state-of-the-art visual performing arts center that was going to be doubled in size, completely um, stripped down to you know to the studs, and then rebuilt, um, adding new studio space that we always wanted and needed, but never had the opportunity to have. I really like the, the natural lighting. Imagine doing the painting right here in front of the window. I was actually there at the proposal my freshman year, and just being able to see the layout where it was kind of like drawn in, and it was kind of hard for me to picture then, but being able to see it now, it's kind of surreal how much it's changed and I've just waited so long being in Little Atwood and being able to come here, I just feel very blessed. It's like overwhelmingly cool here. <laughs> it's definitely um... worth the hype. Wow. You've got almost 200 donors who contributed over two and a half million dollars. So it's really very gratifying uh, to, to see the amount of support that has been provided by so many people to enable this, uh, this beautiful new building to actually happen. I was amazed at how excited the CHCH community was about this project, and it couldn't have happened without them. I'm excited for the future and I'm excited about what that next project is. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks so much, Matt. Um, you know, we're, we're super excited to have that new space and, um, you know, obviously we're, we're getting in there and it's more furnished than what was on um, that video, but it's, it's really exciting. And as you can see, the, the students is the most important center of everything we do here. It's um, really fantastic um, to be able to, to be in that new space. Um, we're going to go on to our introductions next. So I'm going to start with um, Jamie. Hi, um, my name is Jamie Palmer Keating. I'm a chair of the Visual and Performing Arts Department. Um, I've been a teacher at CHCH for 10 years now, actually. Um, I teach AP art, so advanced portfolio, kids who want to go to school for art um, or just want to create a portfolio to really highlight the work that they can do visually. Um, I also teach publications where we create the yearbook and do a lot of graphic design projects. And I've taught nearly all the visual art classes um, that we offer outside of photography while I've been here. Um, and I really love the school. I've been here for a while, so I think you can tell that. But also, um, we're so supportive of the arts at CHCH, and you can tell just by that video and by the building that we have been talking about since I got here, and probably before that. Um, and now we've actually seen it come to fruition, and it's just like, epic. So, um, you know, I think that just shows that the school really supports um, what we do in the visual and performing arts and, and the reasons I've been here so long. And I, I don't plan on going anywhere. So, <laughs> great. Thank you, Jamie. Yeah. All right. Up next is Becca. Hi, I'm Becca Lacoste. I am the theater program director and uh, theater teacher. And um, I have, this is my sixth year. I moved on campus, I think, four years ago, so I'm also a dorm parent on campus as well. Um, but I teach set to stage during the academic day, as well as SAS, actually. Um, and then I'm the director for the fall play, winter musical, and spring play. Um, and 
echoing what Jamie said, just sort of this deep appreciation for the arts. It's something that I uh, was drawn to as a child, and it's part of the reason that I can speak to you now, because as a kid, I was very shy and unable to hold conversations with people. And because of the arts and theater and music and dance, I was able to come out of my shell in a way that I don't think I ever would have before and was able to have this new appreciation for something that has become so deeply ingrained in who I am as a person. Great. Thank you, Becca. All right, next we have Ilana. Hi, I'm Ilana, coming to you live from Harrington Hall on campus. I'm a dorm parent here. I'm the music director during the academic day. I'm also the music director for our winter musical with Mrs. Lacoste. I've been at CHCH for four years now, and I am deeply in love with the sense of community that comes with being part of the CHCH family. It's something I've never experienced anywhere else, and the real deep love for the arts is just incredible here. Oh, great. Thank you, Ilana. And next we have um, two of our students joining us this afternoon. Osmara, do you want to go first? Yes. Uh, hi, guys. My name is Osmara. I'm a Latinx student here on campus. This is my second year at Chapel Hill Chauncey Hall. I came here from New Jersey, so I'm a boarding student with a program called the White Foundation, which helps very talented academically students come to boarding schools like CACH. So this year I've been a part of every production. Sadly, we were not able to do our spring production due to COVID-19, but recently we've done Shrek the Musical, I Was Donkey, which was a very, very amazing <laughs> part to be of. Um, I've done every single production since my freshman year. I'm a two-year representative for the class of 2022. I am part of Calvary, as well as a very active member of SOCA, and I'm usually like a class leader and stuff like that. So yeah, thank you. Great, thank you. All right, up next is Christian. Hi, uh, my name is Christian Shemenkovich. I am a day student at Chapel Hill Chauncey Hall, and this is my third year at CHCH. I came in 2017. I am a junior and I have been part of the theater program since my freshman year. I have done all three shows. I was very disappointed to hear how that we could not do our spring show this year due to COVID-19, but I'm still happy that uh, we were able to finally do a show in our new space, which I thought was really rewarding. And in addition to theater, I also uh, take digital video production. Um, and I'm also part of NHS and a student on the Leadership Council for Student Government as well. Great. Thank you so much, Christian. I'm going to ask each of our faculty members um, just to share a couple slides with us, just to give you an overview about each of the different parts of our arts program. Um, so they're going to share their screens with us and just walk us through that. And then we're going to open it up to questions. Um, so in the meantime, if you want to begin um, typing your questions in the chat box, that would be great. So I can start um, consolidating all, all of your wonderful questions. So I'm going to ask Jamie um, to go through her slide deck first. Sure. Give me just a second here. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, hi everyone again. Um, I wanted to talk to you specifically about visual arts at Chapel Hill today. Um, Becca and Ilana will talk to you a little bit about performance in uh, music. So here's a nice little screenshot of my class doing our critique um, last Thursday, I think it was. Um, you know, things are a little different now, um, but and this was just kind of a fun screenshot to show you how things look in our AP art class and, and how we are when we're critiquing um, each other's work because honestly, the, the work is still continuing just in a, um, we're in our, our kind of our own little silos, but we're coming together often to, to share the creativity that we're still um, having happen in, in our homes, right? Um, making the work. Um, so, you know, talking about the visual arts at, and performing arts um, as a whole at Chapel Hill, we do ask our students to take two years um, full years of the arts and they can take a combination of visual art um, and performing art or they can do two visual arts two performing arts it's up to them um, so you know why do we ask our students to do this really we think that the arts 
promote creativity, right? They, it's obvious when you're physically producing something, visual art, but also creativity in, in the way you think about all of the work that you do in every academic area, that kind of concept of studio thinking. Um, you know, it challenges us to think originally, uh, teaches perseverance, resourcefulness, um, allows for personal exploration and expression, um, and really we promote creative risk-taking and collaboration in our classes. And again, this translates across the curriculum in all different academic areas. Um, additionally, you know, students get to share the work that they're doing in our classes outside of their classes. So you saw um, a little bit in the video of our new gallery space, which is a really beautiful, very large space where we can share a lot of the work that our students are doing three times a year in um, professional shows. We also have a gallery across campus that um, often we show work that from other, from faculty artists um, in not just the art department um, and other work from other academic classes. Um, visual art students in particular have an opportunity to develop a portfolio of their work through their time at school. And if they're really interested in pursuing the visual arts, they can elevate that portfolio to an advanced level that they can then share out to the college board and use for application to, to art colleges as well. Um, you know, often we are um, participating in academic art competitions. Um, we are submitting our work to outside um, places, for example, the digital photography class always submits their photos to the Watertown Savings Bank calendar competition and they're always placing in that. Um, this year we had three honorable mentions um, in the Scholastic Art and Writing Award and one Silver Key Award. Um, so, you know, we're trying to, to push ourselves artistically and share that work with others. Um, we're also working with state-of-the-art technology. So we have a Mac lab with most, the most up-to-date um, computers, but also the software that students might be um, learning at the college level and working with in, in an industry like in, in, you know, kind of industrial design, graphic design. So they're working with those programs at the high school level and really becoming, um, you know, kind of masters of that, um, of those tools and skills. Um, and then students are exploring the arts off campus and field trips and they're collaborating with other classes, um, other artists and communities. Um, we do a lot of kind of cross work with other departments. Um, so keeping with how much time I have, I'm gonna just kind of keep going along and then I can answer questions after of course, but for course offerings, we have about 14 offerings, um, you know, from an introduction to visual art class, one that um, also includes yoga, wheel throwing, art history, um, graphic design, digital video production, digital photography, um, and then of course our, our music classes and our theater class that Becca and Ilana can talk more about. So we have, we like to offer as many um, options as we can for students to really be able to select what they're interested in and pursue it for a full year. Um, and then the last kind of piece, or two last pieces I wanna kind of just um, talk about are just sort of our standouts. Um, I mentioned the Scholastic Art and Writing Awards, but you know, we also have had our yearbook um, from 2019 was selected to be shared with um, schools across the country, actually, as an exemplar book uh, for design. Um, I mentioned the digital photo placement um, in the kind of these other competitions we've been doing, but how we've been sharing our work. Um, but we've also been doing a lot of outreach and, and going out to different museums and trying to get inspiration from artists that are working in the world around us. So we've gone to all of the local museums and all of our classes, often college ex exhibits of artwork, um, and we try to constantly kind of share that work with our students um, during the academic day. Um, so last but not least, um, students get to work with teachers who are actually practicing the, the art that they are specialized in. Um, you know, I think being a practicing artist, all of us are, um, really helps us bring a relevant voice to the classroom. And so for students to see the work that we're doing on our own personally, and then also the commitment we have to our art classes, really I think can kind of give like a sort of a, a whole kind of scope look at, at the art that we're trying to teach our students and really kind of um, allow them to see how they can apply their interest in art and performance in the real world. Um, so that's it for me and I'm gonna stop sharing and move on. Good, but thank job. you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jamie. Sure. All right. So Becca is going to um, share a few of her slides with her and talk about her program in a little bit more depth. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, so. Ta -da. Okay. Um, so the theater program. Here we go. 
Um, it both happens during uh, the academic day and then our co-curricular programming, which is really the bulk of where the theater part of our, of our work lies. Um, so academic programming, we have a class called From Set to Stage, an introduction to theater arts. Um, it really sort of runs the gamut into about what we discuss. We start with basic voice and diction, uh, breath support, diction, body movement, which are things that are, yes, they're theater related, but they're also really wonderful human qualities uh, that are can be utilized then much later in uh, college and beyond in the workforce uh, because getting your point across in a really succinct way is important. Um, second trimester is technical theater, so set design, lighting design, costume design, and maybe some other option. Uh, students work both collaboratively and independently on various aspects of the design. Uh, we learn about how to think about a theatrical piece and the different ways that it, um, it is sort of a catalyst for further discussion. Um, and then the third trimester is putting it all together. So they all work together to put on some sort of production, uh, in-class production, that uh, some of the students might work on the technical aspects if that's something that they felt more compelled to. Some would be actors, student directors, production crew, all of that. Um, and that is a full year class. And then uh, co-curricular programming. So theater performance and theater tech happen sort of similarly to what the athletic program would feel like. So it's every day after school. Uh, we have uh, fall, winter, and spring, a fall play, a winter musical, and a spring play. Um, we do hold auditions, but if you are interested in being a part of our theater performance or theater tech crew, um, you are 100% guaranteed to be a member. Um, our auditions are just so we can get a feel for what people are looking for. What are they, what are they um, interested in doing with us? Uh, we do have that no-cut policy in place. Um, and that's really important to me because it's an opportunity for a student to try something they've never done before and potentially find something that they never knew they loved. And that's really, really, really important. Um, so why do we do it? Because we want to ask questions. We want to get people thinking. Um, we want to find perspective. We want to get our students seeing the world through other people's eyes um, and what that's like so that we can become more compassionate humans. Um, again, to try something new, to, to find out whether or not you are capable of being on stage or how much you needed somebody next to you in order to be able to do that. Um, and then finding a little bit of bravery in all of that. Uh, and then to tell a valuable story, because at the end of the day, it's about the story. It's about um, these, these very human parts of ourselves that we get to share. Um, and then I just put a quote in there from a, our recent production of Shrek, um, which I just felt so honored to hear. Um, it was really a really special thing to hear from, from a current parent. So, um, and then these are some of our recent productions. So um, the ones that are pictured are Fiddler on the Roof, Our Town, uh, The Old Man and the Old Moon, which was exciting because The Old Man and the Old Moon was one of the productions we did last year when we didn't have our barn. And so we used a a giant event tent outside and had our performances outside sort of under the stars uh, and it was a really cool experience for the kids. Similarly, um, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat on the top right um, is uh, was done in our assembly hall which is a beautiful chapel um, and uh, that was a really fun experience to be able to, to do uh, in a space that is super uh, conducive to that type of show. Uh, and then Shrek, which was our most current show, uh, which was in our brand new theater, and we were so excited for that. Uh, and then The Mad Woman of Shio, which is like a really cool, um, different type of play uh, that I, I, I wanted to show you a little bit of like the different types of theater we do. We really try to do a lot of different things. And everything you see on this stage uh, in these photos was built, created, designed all by students, uh, facilitated by a faculty member on the tech team. So all of it is, is student produced and student created and student imagined. And um, that part of it is like the really, really, really special part of all of this is that it becomes super collaborative in that theater tech is its own 
uh, co-curricular programming, but obviously we work together for this common goal, which is really valuable and um, something we can take with us. Really amazing. Great. Thank, Thank you, Becca. Great. All right, Elon, did you want to show a couple of your slides as well? Sure. Thank you. So, give me just a moment. Let me present. All right, so the Performing Arts at Chapel Hill. Um, we have four different classes that happen during the academic day. We have vocal ensemble, chamber ensemble, guitar, and keyboarding. And these are all classes that within the one class, we have multiple levels always within the one class. For vocal ensemble, guitar, and keyboarding, you don't have to come in with any prior knowledge. If you do already know how to play or sing, that's awesome. We can enhance and continue building on the skills that you already have. But if you can't play or have never touched a keyboard in your life, that's okay. We'll figure it out together. Mm -hmm. um, Chamber Ensemble is the class where we do ask you to have prior knowledge of an instrument, be it from one of our classes or from your own experience. And that's where we come together and we create a non-traditional ensemble and create music in somewhat of a chamber setting. Each year we have two formal performances and several informal performances. Our performances usually take place in the assembly hall. We have a winter concert around the holidays and then a spring concert towards the end of the year. And you can see here some of our students performing in our last winter concert. Stop my share. All right. Great. Thank you, Ilana. All right. So we've gotten a handful of questions so far, um, which are fantastic. Keep them coming in. Um, so the first question I'm going to um, ask our students, actually, um, just, you know, how are you able to manage your schoolwork with you know the the performing arts after school and especially during tech week and when you're coming up close to performance time um do you feel like you're able to kind of balance and handle all of that um i could start mm -hmm. i would definitely say that it is definitely a stressful time for anyone who's done theater like who's definitely had that experience is definitely stressful but i would say that the teachers at cach are very very understanding and helping out, making sure that you're not doing that you know that you do not need. Like they're very understanding on that, especially when you have like outside problems. Like for me, like family is a very big thing for me. That's always happening, like in and out of school from New Jersey to Massachusetts. And I've always had like Miss Lacoste and Mrs. Epstein Mora, who's like our technical director during most of the year, always like making sure that I'm fine. And they're always helping me like ease some nerves out, which happens quite often. So I would say it's, it's very manageable, especially when it's like earlier, that's probably like the prime time. But when it's theater week, everyone is so ready to go and like they're just ready to get it done and just perform a very excellent show. Yeah, great. It's all the energy together, right? Yeah. Christian, do you have anything to add to that? Um, def, uh, probably, but Osmar, I think, uh, summed it up really well. Um, the teachers like during like production week it is a pretty stressful time i might i myself get a get a get a bit stressed but the teachers um, at cch are very understanding they won't hold you and what i also love is like during the production week like when we're putting this thing on the whole cast comes be, uh, comes together and we're all we all feel like a family like well, either being on stage or backstage and i feel like that's one of the most rewarding things in, ever mm -hmm. great thank you um, the next question is, are visual arts and music also possible for the after school program or programming or are those only during the regular school day? Um, I can answer that. Uh, it's yeah, it's the academic day. Um, we ask you students to do the two year requirement because we really allow for that diving deep into the topic that the student chooses to pursue. Um, and then the after school programming is its own thing and it's a, a whole other, you know, it's a whole other beast of something they can really jump into and really kind of explore without necessarily having that academic component. Um, and then there is a clubs element to some, like an additional um, time that students can spend exploring um, something in particular. So there's a music club that developed this year. So students who maybe aren't able to take their art requirement and want to do music during the academic day and are also maybe athletes after school can use club time to explore music um, if that's something in particular that they're interested in. 
Yeah. Right. Can I can I build on that? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think for our theater tech students in the co-curricular program, many of them are artists and uh, many of them, you know, they really, they help us paint the sets and build and create these beautiful 3D sets that are giant and beautiful. Um, and then uh, we always have a student design our playbill art, our cover art, which uh, has been done in all different types of mediums, um, from pencil to graphically, um, I don't even know what those design programs are called, um, but, uh, but and really, really incredible work. So they're able to use the skills that they have been honing and, and um, building upon uh, in our co-curricular program. Similarly, on the music side, um, we've had several shows where students are using an instrument uh, for either their character or when we did, like I was saying, The Old Man and the Old Moon, we actually had, directed by Ilana, um, we had a set of students who were both on and off stage uh, playing when they weren't on stage, playing guitar, playing drum, playing, you know, all different types of things too, to sort of make that theatrical experience come to life. Yep, great, great. thank you. And then um, one question, where did it go? Hold on one second, it was on the Q&A, it was in a different area. Um, do you provide instruments or do students have to bring the instrument with them? That's a great question. So we provide instruments that you can practice on during the school day for some instruments. We, we have a set of keyboards that we use for the keyboarding class and that we have a couple guitars that can be used during class, but we encourage as much as possible for the kids to have their own instruments so that they can, this is going to sound really cheesy, but develop a bond with their own instrument, mm -hmm. but also practice on their own and develop when they're not in class. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Um, another question is, do we have a dance program? Um, we don't currently have a dance program, um, but there are, again, those clubs and in, in kind of, I see Oz is looking to say something. Right? Yeah. Um, so I'll let you jump in, Oz, go for it. I was gonna say there is a specific club right now, which is like Dance and Fitness, by, that is run by a couple juniors and seniors, I believe. But there's also like a lot of us that like in and out of the theater program who want to create like our own little dance club that's like more modern, like a lot of like other cultural kind of dances that we would like to do in for presentations and stuff like that. So there's always those opportunities on campus to start your own thing, like dance, which is something a lot of us really do like to do, is especially like during theater when we have our performances. Miss Lacoste is always looking for some people with like some dance backgrounds, especially for those big dance numbers that we have to do. So that's always something there. Yeah, I think student leadership is really valuable. And so any opportunity we have to provide that for them and to give them opportunities to be student choreographers um, and to be dance captains. Those are always opportunities that we have given and continue to give. Great, thank you. Um, let's see, another question. Um, for ninth and 10th graders, is it a must to take a visual performing arts as a club or lesson? So Jamie, do you wanna just go through the, the requirements again? Right, so there, there isn't a requirement to take a visual or um, performing arts class at the freshman level, but it is an, a choice. It depends on sort of working with the dean um, when you initially kind of sign up for classes and, and what works best for you because you do have a language requirement um, and sometimes SAS or skills and academic support, um, you know, there might be a choice of or a balance that you might want to strike. So it might not be until sophomore or junior year that a student takes their first visual or performing arts class. Um, I would say that if a student is interested in pursuing the visual or performing arts and wants to take more than two while they're at school, um, they'd want to talk to the dean about that in the first kind of, you know, conversations about scheduling so that they can make the room for that um, in their ninth grade schedule mm -hmm. or tenth grade schedule. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, so a typical, um, you know, ninth grade or tenth grade schedule, schedule, you'd have all your content area subjects, so math, science, English, and history. And then um, if you're not in skills and academic support, you could take your world language and art because we have six blocks throughout the day. Um, but if you are in skills and academic support, you would decide between a world language or visual arts, but both requirements are two years. Um, so you'll have plenty of time to do that. And most kids 
might need skills and academic support their first year um, and might not need it thereafter. So there's plenty of time to, to get that all in as well um, for that. So I think hopefully the Carolyn that answered your, your question for that. If not, and you want more specifics, please, I, I'm happy to, to um, have a conversation with you as well. Um, let me see. And then, um, and the yearbook, how does that run? Is that after school or is it um, one of the electives you could take during the, the academic day? Um, so that's actually, we do that in our publications class. So it's a, it's a, a full year course, um, which is amazing because then you have a, a core group of students working on the yearbook throughout the entire year and they can really dive into content in um, design. Um, so I teach that class and we work with Adobe InDesign um, and we spend the first two trimesters creating the book um, proofing it, editing it, doing everything we need to do. And then we spend our third trimester exploring graphic design projects that are interesting to us as the individual. So a student might be able to explore product design and work in Adobe Illustrator, or they might design their own fashion line in Illustrator and then market that fashion line. You know, social media campaign, um, you know, that's another option where you're kind of designing a website and doing some kind of graphic design work on your own that you're interested in. So it really allows for students to do a big project like the yearbook and, and kind of dive into it as opposed to an after school where it's like 30 minutes and, or an hour each day and then the, the group switches every trimester. Um, it allows us to do that as a, as a group and then and produce a really nice book um, and then also explore some other graphic design work um, that maybe kind of speaks to your own individual interests. Great, thank you. Yeah. And um, let me see. And so as far as um, just requirements for after school, um, so students have to choose between something for the co-curricular. So they could either choose something in our athletic program, which will be having that live webinar on Wednesday. Um, so if you're interested about the athletics at CHCH, um, hopefully you can join us for that or watch the recorded webinar. Um, but then you also, again, have the choice of doing some, something in the in the performing arts program, whether it's on stage or the tech, tech crew. Um, it is pass fail, so it is Required. So if you're if you don't do it, then you know you don't get that that pass or fail on your transcript, and then would have to make that. Is that correct, Jamie? That so it's different than the two year requirement of the arts requirement during the academic day. This is separate and part of the co curricular program. Right. I think I believe if you hit a certain number of absences, it's like we have like the rule of ten for after school. Um, then you have to make it up in some other way. So we really want everybody to participate because it is a team. If it's theater, we still consider it a team sport, right? Because it is a team sport exactly. to produce a um, a production like that we do at the level we do. So we want our students to be fully engaged. And so yes, we do take attendance. And if you miss ten, you have to make it up. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, and then another question. Um, just for the students, um, have you were you interested in the arts before and just got inspired here, or is that something you were super interested in prior to coming to CHCH? And how how has this opportunity kind of led you to continue to to push yourselves in those areas? Um, um, so I was already interested in theater, and uh, coming here just allowed me to just uh, continue to do that though and explore more and I also got into video as well that's why I'm taking digital video production mm -hmm. so it's a uh, so I feel coming here like has really like boosted my interests in the arts mm -hmm. great thank you um for me I was always a very artistic girl I love drawing I love painting I love like singing acting dancing all that stuff mm -hmm. so in like fifth and sixth grade that's when I became very interested in it so mm -hmm. when I found out I had a very deep love and like talent for it, I knew like that was going to be the thing that was going to help bring out my family from our circumstances to help bring it out here. And that's also another reason why I looked into boarding school because I knew that was an amazing opportunity for me to like demonstrate my talents and my not only my academic abilities, but what else I can provide for a school. So with CCH, that's only furthered my love for the arts, not only like visuals but also very important in like the theatrics and that aspect it's like learning how to learning how to sing like with Ms. mrs epstein like my vocal ensemble my freshman year and always like using those little skills that i learned in and out of school for theater and now i'm looking into like programs now like during the summer in new jersey because that's something i truly want to like further my craft and like call and things like that mm -hmm. Great, good, thank you. Um, for those students really interested in pursuing art in college, um, can you speak to that? What, you know, if they're, what preparation um, is done 
prior? And then what's the college process like? How do you support that? Um, yeah, that's a great question. So we would try to like with our, our students interested when they're coming in in the ninth and 10th grade year, identify that that's something they want to do, a path they want to take. And we would um, encourage them to, to take the advanced 2D and 3D pre-AP class that we offer for juniors. Um, and that starts to get them thinking about creating their portfolio and they can potentially create actual portfolio pieces in that class. And then we ask them to do something between their summer, their junior summer and their senior year, a course um, at a college, um, an arts course, and really actually kind of expand their skills and their interests outside of our school and continue their work um, throughout the summer. And then they bring that work to us in their AP year, um, senior year, where we evaluate the work they've done um, and then start developing a path for their portfolio. Um, at the AP level, we are creating um, 15 pieces of work that are put together in a portfolio that are then submitted to the college board, mm -hmm. which is an outside group of specialists who will comment and grade and, and, and look at that portfolio and that grade can actually take the place of um, college credits at some colleges. Um, but even before that portfolio is completed and that AP year has, has ended, students are already creating a college portfolio um, to submit in the fall, right? So they're working with Ms. Fink, who's our college counselor, who you can um, speak to tomorrow, um, and me about sort of preparing their very best look at who they are as an artist, writing about their artwork, um, you know, kind of putting together that portfolio that can go to colleges. Mm -hmm. um, we also in their senior year asked them to take art history along with AP as a way to prepare them for art in college, because mm -hmm. it's not just about making something look pretty. It's about mm -hmm. knowing how to talk about your work and how to um, have some historical references and, and, and know where your work fits in, in contemporary society and what's come before you and what's coming. Um, you know, at the same time that you're creating your work. So, you know, there's a lot that goes into it and there's a lot of conversation happening with our students. Um, I also happen to be, as an AP art teacher, all of my students are also my advisees. So mm -hmm. I'm also meeting with them outside of our, our art class weekly and we are constantly checking in about where they are um, and how I can support them during that college application process and also um, through preparing them to get them to um, school. And one last thing that I'll say, because I know I'm still talking, um, okay. is that in our art class AP, we often will, I'll connect them with people who are working in the art world and people who have come before them. So alums that are in art school um, this year, because we're in this amazing um, silo, right? Like I'm at my house, I happen uh, to be married to a, a designer. So he's going to be our speaker um, mm -hmm. this year. And he's going to come and talk to students about what it's like to go to art school and then get a job and in, in the arts um, and in a normal circumstance, we might go somewhere and talk to some people, um, mm -hmm. but I'm constantly trying to give them some relevant kind of connection in the outside world so that they know that there is life after art school mm -hmm. with, a, with a job. Yep, there's right. no one more perfect than Steve for that. Yeah, that's true, that's true. <laughs> perfect contact. And then um, what type of majors are students pursuing? Are they kind of one specific or within the arts or? You know, we've had uh, the people run the gamut. So industrial design, painting, um, you know, graphic design, art history. Um, mm -hmm. It really has been all across the board. Um, and there are people working in the film industry. There are people working um, in graphic design, um, in publishing. So, you know, you never know where it's going to lead you. But a lot of them have kind of found their passion at school, but then really decided that that was what they wanted to do at the college level or they got to the college level and then realized oh you know what I really thought I was going to be a painting major I'm actually going to kind of veer towards graphic design because I like the commercial aspect of it mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. and then um this question um is for the students but before we get there I just wanted to talk because I think you all do such a great job collaborating with the content area teachers as well really so how do you leverage the arts and performance and all that within our content area teacher teaching and can you speak to that a little bit about you know it's not just taking an arts class but you're also using art as your your learning different subject areas yeah becca seems to have something right to say so uh, since you've been listening to me becca <laughs> go and then i can add in well no i was gonna say i think we do a lot of collaboration and sometimes it happens sort of sneakily if you will like it's mm -hmm. sort of happens on an inside track and uh, using uh, theater or art or music as a way to sort of get into another subject mm -hmm. um, or enhance that subject matter. So 
Um, uh, one area that I can talk about is the, the history class does a, a Senate simulation. And um, what that actually truly is, is what's called process drama, which is taking um, aspects of theater and using it in your core curriculum to become someone else and learn from the inside. So all students take on a particular senator, they learn about who they are and what they believe and why they believe those things. Uh, and then the students essentially put on a giant Senate simulation um, production, if you will, of, of using, using those characters, using those characters, which are actually real people, mm -hmm. um, uh, to then come up with their own, pass these laws and make this other thing happen. It's, all, it's, it's really fascinating and wonderful and it takes a long time for mm -hmm. them and it's a long, long process. Um, similarly, my theater class, um, we were in our tech theater aspect of our class, and we created um, sort of in, in a very organic type of way, we ended up, the another history class had a, um, uh, the Black African American Experience Museum that they created for um, uh, February, in February, and it was it was awesome because my theater class was in the space as they were putting all of these displays up in this museum setting mm -hmm. uh, and my theater class did all of the lighting for it so they were able to then you know cut and focus the lights and create color on them and, and use what the teacher and the students really wanted the picture to look like mm -hmm. and then and then create all of the lighting for it so mm -hmm. it really is sort of we're working hand in hand and trying to do as much as we can mm -hmm. to um, bring the arts into all of those core uh, curriculum classes because mm -hmm. it's such a beautiful way to translate that type of material. Great, thank you. Good. All right. Um, for the students, um, it can either um, Kristen Mara, can you speak to just the balance of a love for visual and performing arts with the need to take skills in academic support, um, even in the higher grades, and also having an interest in language. Um, you know, how has that worked out for you? Do you feel like you've been able to have enough exposure to the arts while also maybe needing SAS and also needing to fulfill or wanting um, to pursue a language? Christian, have you taken SAS? I have taken SAS since my yeah. career, so. Yeah, I feel you should talk about that a little more. So uh, for me, uh, particularly, I took in my freshman and sophomore year, I took SAS and then language. This is my first year taking an art because I already completed the two languages, but I still take SAS. And I feel like taking SAS really helps me with um, like organ with organization, um, sort of managing my time. And I find that really helpful. And uh, also taking the visuals as well. Mm -hmm. And do you feel like and do you feel like that's taken away like and then you're doing the performing arts after school do you feel like that's been enough to fulfill that your first two years when you took a language and sas and didn't get to take a visual arts class uh do you feel no. like it was enough of a balance of it was enough having, of a balance yeah, yeah. yes okay. it was yeah Sorry, i didn't mean to put words in your i just wanted to make sure i got to the question oh, no, uh, no. you didn't feel robbed of anything by having to choose okay. not at all okay um so, um for me, I don't take SAS, but I also take a language as well as like taking like arts as well. So for me, I found it was, again, like it's very balanced, like with the way that our classes are structured, I never feel like overwhelmed with anything. Mm -hmm. I've always found myself asking for extra help. I always feel very comfortable reaching out when I do need that assistance. And like in terms of language as well, I also take French, but they're also very understanding of when like certain things happen, especially like in terms of theater, but I also speak fluent Spanish. My my mother is an indigenous Mexican, so that I have that culture always like upon me. So I'm always speaking Spanish and like switching out of those two like roles, things which helped me a lot. But I've always seen that like I've never had to like choose and fight between having a passion for different things. I've always found myself really finding the time and the place for each one of those. Okay, great. Thank you. Um let's see. Um, I think we spoke to this a little bit, but are there opportunities to learn about web design and digital arts within the classroom? And JB, I think you talked about that through the publications. 
Yeah, yeah, publications, we have those two trimesters we're working on the yearbook and then students can choose to explore, say, web design, for example, um, not the coding side of it, but like the design side of it in the spring if they're interested. Um, and, you know, there are, there's digital video production, which isn't web design, but it's another form of like working with different kinds of technology that we support. Um, but we don't have per se like a web design class for a full, full year, um, mm -hmm. but it is an opportunity in the, in the publications level. Okay, great. Um, and then for Osmara or Christian, um, what has been your favorite R class so far at CHCH and how has it really just pushed you outside of your comfort zone? Um, an R class? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, this is my first year taking an R class. Mm -hmm. um, I'm taking, uh, again, yeah, I'm taking digital video production and I, um, could you repeat the question? I'm sorry. Yeah, do you feel like, um, well, it was, what's been your favorite art class? So that's only been your first one, but has it, do you feel like it's been really like pushing you in a different way than your performing arts, for example, because that was really your comfort zone and now you're yeah. dabbling in video production. So how do you yeah. feel like that's really been challenging you artistically? Well, um, in digital video, like I'm the one who uh, needs to come up with the ideas with uh, how everything's gonna go in theater, um, I'm more just the actor. I'm mm -hmm. there and like the director is the cost will give me uh, directions on what to do. Um, yeah. In digital video, I'm the one who comes up with the idea. So I feel like that's sort of been like a shift though. And since I've been an actor for a while though, I can sort of like relate to like, if I have an actor in a video, mm -hmm. this is what need, this is what's sort of gonna happen. Yeah, great. Yeah. So you're able to bring that skill set into that. That's really cool. Yeah, very similarly to Christian as well. Like. Last year, I took vocal ensemble. This year, I'm not taking an art because I decided to double up in my maths. Mm -hmm. So in vocal ensemble, there were some moments I was like, Mrs. Epstein, that's a little too high for me. I was like, ah, there was some moments <laughs> where I was very stressed. But I always found that like Mrs. Epstein was just like, it's okay, Oz, Oz, I know you can do it, Oz, please do it. And I was just like, okay, I'll do it, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. And I found that really helped me and really pushed me, especially like when I'm doing the musical, that really helped me a lot to like, find the breast support and making sure that I can actually hear a note and I can actually <laughs> produce that note. So I found that was very helpful. And also like, especially in terms of visual arts as well, like my advisor, her name is me, is Ms. Doolin. She's also an art teacher. Mm -hmm. So she's always letting me go to like Atwood and create like pieces for myself. Cause I'm, that's always something I love to do. So like this year for our flag day, which is a day where we're able to celebrate the different ethnicities. I did one for the natives peoples and Ms. Ms. Doolin, she helped me have like the canvas for it with the paints, making sure that like I was, that it was something I was very proud of and I was very proud of that piece. Mm -hmm. Great, that's amazing, good. All right, we're just coming up on an hour and I don't see any other um, questions coming in, but if there are any other questions that you have or you think of when, we, um, when we're finished this afternoon, I'm sure any of the panelists would be happy um, to reach out with you directly, but I just want to give a round of applause to everyone um, for taking time out of their afternoon and our, our crazy schedules these days and balancing work life and, and having, I know some of us have little ones. Um, so thank you everyone for participating in this afternoon's webinar. We have such an amazing arts program. I've been at the school for 18 years and I can just say that I'm just so thrilled um, to have now the space to support our ever evolving arts program. It's just grown so much over my time here. Um, and it's just so cool to hear these amazing stories of our students really getting into that space and being able to be so creative without any limitations at this point. So again, thank you all for joining us and um, hopefully you can join us tomorrow for our college counseling segment, as well as our athletics at CHCH on Wednesday. Thank you, Matt, for putting the link in the chat box for that. Um, so please um, feel free to register um, for those as well. So again, thank you, everyone, and hope to see you all soon. Bye. Take care. Enjoy the nice day. Bye-bye.